Hey everyone, welcome to a new Tuts Plus tutorial. I'm Adi, and in this video, you'll learn about Flexbox sizing. Now, this is video number three of a three-part series we're doing on Flexbox, and if you want to find the others, check out the links in the video description. There is a lot to learn about Flexbox, and we covered it in detail on Envato Tuts Plus. Anna Monas wrote this fantastic series of three articles on the subject, and if you prefer a written version, I highly recommend you check those out. If you're more comfortable with video, then stick around for this one because uh, you're going to learn how to work with the following three properties. Flex Grow, Flex Shrink, and Flex Basis. You'll also learn a cool shorthand notation for all three. So I think we should just get started. But before we do that, uh, let me quickly tell you about Envato Elements. With one subscription, you'll have unlimited access to assets like fonts, mockups, CMS templates, and more. There are millions of digital assets to choose from. They have simple commercial licensing and you can cancel anytime. Subscribe now using the link in the video description. All right, now back to Flexbox. All right, so when it comes to sizing in Flexbox, you're basically talking about how to distribute the remaining free space along the main axis. So what do I mean by that? Well, consider this image. We have three rendered flex items, but we still have a lot of free space on the right side. How do we fill that? Or maybe we're in the opposite situation. The flex items are bigger than the flex container. So how do we deal with this deficit of free space? Well, these are the two scenarios we're going to work on today. And for each, we have a dedicated property. First, let's work on a scenario where we have a surplus of space. For situations where the flex items have been rendered and we have some extra free space on the main axis that we want to fill, we can use the flex grow property. The definition says that the flex grow CSS property sets the flex grow factor of a flex item's main size. In other words, it defines the ability for a flex item to grow if necessary. For value, it can take a positive number and it defaults to zero. Let's see how this works. I have a simple demo here, one flex container, three flex items. As you can see, after they're being rendered, we have some extra space on the side here. So how do we fill that space? We go into our CSS file and under the flex item, we say flex grow, we set it to one. So watch what happens. The remaining free space is added to each flex item. So these will now occupy the all the available space in the container. The smaller the container, the less they grow. The bigger the container, the more they grow. Now, this number, one, is a factor, meaning each flex item should take up the amount of free space times one. Now, if I'm gonna go into the second, or if I'm gonna select the second flex item, and I'll set flex grow to two. Notice how this got bigger than the others. One and three are now equal in width, right? So there are 226 each, but number two is much higher than that because the second child, because we gave it a factor of two, it took up twice as much free space. If we're going to set this to three, oops, it's going to take up three times as much free space or 10 times as much free space as the other flex items. 
I can even do something like this. Let's target the third one. And we can say, okay, I want my second child to take up twice as much of the available free space. And I want my third to take up five times as much as the available free space. So notice that now these three items are all different sizes. This one, because it has a, a growth factor of one, will take up just a small amount of space. This one will take twice as much space. This will take up five times as much space. So that's it for Flex Grow. It's very, very simple to use. Now, for situations where the Flex items have been rendered and there is not enough free space on the main axis, uh, we can use the property flex shrink. This is the opposite of flex grow. The definition says that the flex shrink CSS property sets the flex shrink factor of a flex item. If the size of all flex items is larger than the flex container, items shrink to fit according to flex shrink. In other words, it defines the ability for a flex item to shrink if necessary. For value, it can take a positive number and it defaults to one. So let's see how this works. I have another simple demo here, a flex container with three flex items. Now, the flex container has a width of 40 rems and I've set it so that it does not wrap on a new line. Each flex item has a width of 20 rems. So 20, 20, 20, that equals 60 rems. And I'm not even counting the, uh, the margins here. 60 rems is bigger than 40 rems. So why aren't these items overflowing? That's because flex shrink is set to one by default. So it means the flex items will shrink so that they fit inside the flex container. But if we were to set the flex shrink to zero, now our items will have the correct width of 20 rems and they will overflow the container. So using flex shrink is pretty simple. It works pretty much the same as flex grow, only in reverse. The number you set is basically a factor by which the item will be rendered smaller instead of bigger. So by defining flex shrink zero here, we're saying, okay, don't make the flex items smaller. But I can go into nth child one and I can say flex shrink one here. So that will shrink this item as much as possible so that all flex items will fit inside a flex container. However, by setting the value of one on all of them, I can set different factors for different elements. So for example, this will be twice as small as this. We can even check it. This is 109 times two, 215. So it's almost twice as small. I can set this to be three times as small. So this will basically shrink this item even more and will allow the other items to fill in the rest of the space. And that's basically how flex shrink works. All right, so now you know how to deal with too much or not enough free space in a flex container. Now, uh, there is a third property I wanna tell you about, and that one is closely related uh, to the two that I talked about previously. This property is called flex basis, and its definition goes something like this. The flex basis CSS property sets the initial main size of a flex item. This happens before 
the remaining space is distributed. For values, it can take a length like 5 rems, 10 pixels, 20%, and so on, or a keyword. There are a few keywords available like auto, content, max content, min content, and fit content. But other than auto, which is the default, the others have pretty shady browser support, so we're not going to worry about them at this point. Now, flex basis is actually the correct way of setting the size of a flex item. Width or height still work as long as you don't change the direction of the main axis. But flex basis will actually set the correct size, either that's width or height, depending on the direction of the main axis. Let me show you an example. I have a simple demo here, a flex container with three flex items. The direction is row, wrapping is set to wrap. Now, on the flex items, I set a width of 20 rems. And this is great, it works just fine as long as the flex direction is row. But if I set the flex direction to column, I also need to change the property here on the flex item from width to height because width works horizontally while height works vertically. So to prevent that from happening, what you can do is instead of width or height, use flex basis. And flex basis will check what's the flex direction. Is it column? Okay, we'll set the height to 20 rems. Is it a row? Okay, in this case, we're gonna set the width to 20 rems. So this is why when you're using Flexbox, it's important that instead of width or height, you use flex basis. And as I said, it can take any length value. There are also some keywords that you can use, like for example, content, in which case the flex item will only be as wide or as tall as its contents, right? Notice if I change this to column now, the height will be different. This also has a bit of a line height uh, on the text. That's why it doesn't touch the boundaries here, but you get the idea. With that said, these keywords have um, some pretty bad browser support right now, so I wouldn't recommend you use them. Instead, just stick with regular lengths like so. Now, before we wrap up this tutorial, I just want to mention that there is a shorthand notation for all three properties that I talked about in this video. So for flex uh, grow, flex shrink, and flex basis. And that shorthand property is called flex. It uh, goes something like this. You would say flex, and then you would put in the value of flex grow, which by default is zero, then the value for flex shrink, which by default is one, and then the value for flex basis, which by default is auto. And let's actually delete this one. So these are the default values, but of course you can then change it. Do you want items to grow? Just set the flex, the flex grow to one. You can leave the flex shrink to one. And maybe you can set the flex basis to whatever value you want, maybe 30 rems. And this is actually the recommended way we use these property with this, uh, with this shorthand. And even if it looks a little bit complicated, I would advise you to learn this notation and use it in, uh, in all your projects, of course, when you're working with Flexbox. Now, you don't have to write all three uh, values at, uh, at the same time. For example, if you're gonna use the relative values, so flex shrink and flex grow, you can do this. Flex and a relative value will equal to flex grow. If you put two relative values, it's gonna be flex grow and flex shrink. If you're gonna use one absolute value, like for example, 20 rems, that's gonna be translated to flex basis. 
And there are a couple more combinations you can do. Uh, you can check out um, Anna's article where she gives some more in-depth uh, examples on how to use this uh, flex shorthand notation. But for now, know that it exists and it's actually the recommended way that you use the three properties I talked about today, flex grow, flex shrink, and flex basis. All right, time for some key takeaways. Number one, in Flexbox, sizing is about distributing the remaining free space along the main axis. Number two, to make flex items use the surplus of free space, use the flex grow property. Number three, to make items smaller so they fit inside the flex container, use the flex shrink property. Number four, to define the initial size of a flex item the right way, use the flex basis property instead of width or height. Finally, number five, instead of using flex grow, flex shrink, and flex basis separately, use the shorthand flex. All right, and that's about it for this video. Don't forget you can also check out the original article written by Anna Monas using the link in the description below. Thank you very much for watching. I'm Adi, and until next time, take care.